Hello everyone, this is Vivo here. Hope all of you are doing great. Today's video is about the big new update Trio Savior just received. So let's get this whole thing started. Um, I'm going to um, scroll through the whole patch notes here and yeah, we're going to discuss every point. I'm not going to go in depth about everything i'm going to summarize some points because the patch notes as you will see are quite long so um the first thing is the sister content is added um the sister is a regular content derived from the grimer master event you can acquire and grow monsters which can help in uh, various ways the acquired sisters can be some specific contents for direct support in the battle it can also help you by uh, status level up and combination synergies. So I already um, played around with this a bit. Um, the sisters give you bonus stats. They can also be combined to give you even better stats and so forth. And um, all of that is um, currently bound to quests. So um, I would advise everyone to do that. Um, you can actually get some really nice stats. Um, it's certainly an interesting um, content uh, piece that was added here. Unfortunately. Homunculus is still not a thing in Tree of Savior, even though it has been there since pretty much the beginning, but I guess the sister um, is something, yeah, they added as a compensation, I guess. Let's see um, how this develops. Um, I find it interesting. I didn't have a chance to go uh, in depth uh, into it uh, until now, uh, just uh, playing around a bit, but it seems like a nice addition. Okay. The Lepidodera Junction Legend Great Heart is added. Okay, um, yeah, this is the existing um, moth uh, dungeon. Um, the two hard moth uh, monsters to kill. Um, since all the other raid dungeons already have a hard mode, also casual mode and so forth, uh, that of course makes sense. Um, you can read through um, the whole article to see what it actually entails so this is another nice addition and uh, certainly a challenge for players to get some uh, good items um, but I want to discuss with you the three new types of craftable arcs that are added so uh, we got a swift one the, these are three consecutive hits when melee basic attacks um, or two consecutive hits uh, hit when you're doing a ranged base attack. Strength, dex, intelligence plus 20 per level. Basic attack plus 120% on level 3 plus 20% per 3 levels afterwards. Swift activation chance plus 10 on level 3. Swift activation chance plus 5% per 5 levels afterward. Okay, these new arcs are very strong. Um, they certainly probably help every DPS build so very interesting to get, uh, that's for sure. Uh, let's go to the Thunder Arc. Uh, Thunderbolt Lightning property attack on a single target. Thunderbolt activation will stack up to the Storm Max. Activate chance uh, according to the damage dealt. Uh, strength intelligence plus 20 per one level. Storm Max activation chance plus 17% on level 3. Storm Max activation chance plus 2% per 3. Levels afterwards, Thunderbolt factor plus 3,500% on level 3. So you see it's that's a strong one as well. Thunderbolt factor plus 700 per 5 levels afterward. And the last one, the Storm one. Storm Lightning property AoE attack up to 7 targets. Storm activation will stack up to the Storm Max um, active chance according to the damage dealt strength intelligence plus 20 per 1 level. Storm Max activation chance plus 17% on level 3. Storm Max activation chance plus 2% per 3 levels afterward. Storm Factor plus 1200% on level 3, Storm Factor plus 250% per 3, um, 5 levels afterward. Okay, um, very interesting, certainly stronger than the arcs that already exist. And I've already seen several um, videos from the Korean server. And these arcs, they kick some real butt. So certainly something you can add to your collection to increase your dps um yeah here's the explanation how to get um the recipes how to get the ingredients and everything where to get everything so this is a 
something nice you can um, read through here, how to get it. I'm not gonna go in depth about it, just the discussion about the new arcs. Now we get to a nice part here of the patch notes. The new Vivora unique grade items are added. So new Vivora weapons have been added. The new Vivora unique grade items will be dropped from the elite monsters in the episode 12 fields at low chance. So these are the fields that have the um, six highest um, levels on the world map. Um, previous Vivora items ha will have special name on them and the unnamed effects will also have the name added. So let's get through them one by one because those are a game changer for a lot of classes. The first one is the Vivora One-Handed Sword, Strength 122, Dex 120, Attack against Blade Armored Targets 992, uh, Montana skill level plus 2, all Odalero skill levels plus 1, additional hit, strike property with equal skill attack to 20 enemies in front when using Montana. Additional hit uh, is considered as the same skill uh, with Montana. Um, certainly interesting for Rodin Leros. Um, the stats are nice, the skill level increases are nice. Um, we have to see how this works out. It looks nice. Um, so certainly something um, shield classes that have Rodelero in it can add to their collection to have a really good weapon here. Um, the Vora Pike. Strength 218, critical chance 744, attack against medium type targets 1488, and this is the one for Lancers, the uh, grind, that's just the name of it. Uh, Quintain skill level plus 3, use Quintain um, of the current level when crushed is used. That's pretty dope, I have to say. Um, also taking into consideration that Spear class has received some nice buffs with, the, with this patch as well, we'll get to that later. Vivora Dagger Shadow Clone, um, Dex plus 148, Critical Chance plus 190, Physical Critical Attack plus 1280 Shadow Clone. All Shinobi skills except Ruchin no Jutsu plus 1 level, um, Summon 1 sh uh, Shadow Clone when equipped with 1 or more Bunshin no Jutsu skill level. So if you have 1 uh, level in Bunshin no Jutsu at least, it'll cast. The Shadow Clone, Shadow Clone duration infinite. Cannot inflict basic damage, copies the shinobi scale of the original, does not consume HPSP, stackable with clones summoned by Bunshin no Chutsu. The shadow clone copies cloaking. Um, so uh, a lot of um, Korean uh, videos or videos of Korean players from the Korean so with this dagger, it is quite nice. It is a pretty good weapon. Um, Shinobis also received a huge buff with this patch here, so Shinobis Richards. Vivora Pistol, that's the one for our uh, Schwarz Writers. Um, strength 143, Dex 143, additional damage plus 1500, Spirit Curry plus 150. Basic Pistol Attack damage plus 200% during Gleamer Combat, Basic Pistol Attack Speed plus 40% during Gleamer Combat. Sounds pretty good to me. Um, that also reminds me, whatever happened to Running Shot? RIP Running Shot. Uh, Vivora Stuff, Diffuse Reflection. Now we get to an interesting one because this one is for Shadowmancers and Shadowmancers have received a lot of love lately. So, Intelligence 220, nice attack against cloth armor targets, uh, 1488 and magic critical attack 1800. Those are pretty good stats. But now comes the even better part, Shadowform skill level plus 2, number of consecutive hits of Shadowform plus 1, cooldown of Shadowform minus 5 seconds and Shadowform gives damage to maximum 5 targets nearby. Mwah. Wonderful. Mwah. Um, my water stuff, Firebolt. Um, intelligence 195, Spirit 195, Critical Chance 744. Those, this weapon is for um, Pyromancers, yeah. Uh, I almost forgot the Pyromancers. Fire Pillar skill level plus 2, Fire Pillar damage plus 100% the uh, descent meteor to a random place nearby Fire Pillar. Meteor falls cycle 0.5%. The meteor is considered as the same skill with Fire Pillar. That is pretty damn good. My Pyromancer build will love it. And I guess all the other Pyromancers as well. Vivora Road. Um, Spirit 150, Intelligence 140, Magical Critical Attack 1375. All Sorcery skill levels plus 1. Devil of the secondary card remains after using Evocation Summon skills automatically used. 
Unmountable duration 10 seconds. I'm not the biggest expert on summoners. Um, special stats sound good. All sorcerer skill levels plus one. Um, the last effect um, sounds decent as well, but I would have to go uh, in depth in game to see if it's actually great. But heard a lot of sorcerer players complain that this is a rod weapon, not a staff weapon, because it seems like most of them use staff weapons. Vivora Maze! Um, this is a wrong description. As you can see, they just uh, copied it here. Um, let's then go to the Vivora Two Handed Maze. Intelligence 120, Dex 120, Spirit 120, Visual Damage 1500, AoE Attack Ratio 5. Um, increased in basic uh, attack damage by 1% of extra damage value during Binacio buff, up to 1000%. Um, that here doesn't belong to the weapon. That's also a um, yeah, mistake by the developer. Um, this is a, a pretty good weapon for um, um, chaplains, so that's actually pretty decent. The Vivora Maze uh, was actually intended for Inquisitors and um, the special stats uh, are something I will follow up with. Um, I know it's pretty decent, but not the best Vivora weapon, weapon in the world. Um, also, I think they also mixed up the mace and the two-handed mace because I think that one-handed mace is for um, chaplains and the two-handed mace is for inquisitors. Because, yeah, that should uh, always be the case. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't make sense to me. So here we have the Aurora two-handed mace. Um, let's go through the stats real quick. Strength plus 221, critical rate plus 740, attack against blade armor targets plus 1488, god smash skill level plus 3, God Smash range plus 100%, number of consecutive hits of God Smash plus 1, and one stack of Outrage buff when using God Smash. Unfortunately, it is not mentioned here what Outrage does, um, but uh, I know it because it was mentioned in the official Tree of Sea forum since uh, there are some nice people that actually um, translate this stuff when it comes out on the Korean server. And what Outrage does is it increases the size of your player. Um, it can gain three stacks at max and then you will get a um, buff that makes you take 50% less magic damage and if you use Ripper all stacks will be consumed and for 5 seconds Ripper will do 30% damage so all in all a uh, pretty good weapon I'd say even for most people um, don't like God Smash because it's a bit slow to use but me as an Inquisitor player I'd say it's pretty good. So everyone, since the patch notes didn't want to give us the correct stats for the Vivora one-handed twin maze, I searched for them and now I have it for you. So the one-handed Vivora maze, AoE attack ratio plus 5, strength, dex, intelligence and spirit plus 120, and special stat is increased in basic attack damage by 1% of extra damage value during Pinacio buff, plus maximum 1000%. Sounds really good to me, so a good uh, weapon for chaplains. Here we have the Vivora 200 maze for Inquisitors, Strength 221, Critical Rate 740, Attack against Blade uh, Armored Targets 1488, God Smash Skill Level plus 3, God Smash Range plus 100%, Number of Consecutive Hits on God Smash plus 1, One Stack of Outrage Buff when using God Smash. So, um, sounds pretty good to me, people say um, God Smash is a bit wonky to use. Not the fastest skill to cast, but I think it's really decent. It's okay. It's not the best Vivora weapon in the world, but I'll say it's pretty good. So I think most Inquisitors can live with that. Me as an Inquisitor player, I can live with it and I'm fine with it. Okay, new level 430 Legend Great accessories are added. The new level 430 Legend Great accessories can be crafted by the Blacksmith and Fetty Bayan. Um, the new craft special ingredient feature is added to the personal, to the professional alchemist, Abello and Carpeda, which can craft the sp uh, special materials for the new accessory or the arc. And we also have a new XP essence added. Um, this is an interesting one, so I'll quickly go through it. The XP essence can be purchased from the alchemist master, Vaidotas, and the professional alchemist, Abello, uh, at the price of 1 million silver. It can be activated by the character of maximum level, currently for 50. And it will store 50% of the XP that the character acquires. Fully charged XP essence can be used by the character 
of level uh, 430 to 449 using the XP essence to provide the stored XP to the character. Certainly not the worst idea in the world, so I'll take it. Um, here we just have the events that are currently going on. Um, sister event, as I said. Uh, there's a fishing event going on. Um, there's also an event going on in case any of the classes you have in your build are being balanced. So you get um, free, what are they called, class points and um, skill and attribute reset potions. That's good. So let's go through the PvE changes together. New accumulated damage rewards for the weekly boss rate are added. As you can see here, Mystic Tome pages, the weekly boss rate cube are added. Also, Medal of Honor Bruta, that's very important. Um, so the market kind of fills up with them and they are not that expensive anymore. Uh, Mystic Tome pages added to the reward list of the weekly boss rate and the Dimension Collapse point. That's always welcome. Um, the game needs more Mystic Tome pages. Because those arts are expensive. Three new bosses added to the weekly boss rate, that's welcome. So we have a bit of change of pace there. Um, some features of the weekly boss rate are changed. Um, these are just um, small adjustments here you can read for yourself. Um, this is a nice one. Final product will be given in the Astral Tower closed for the unique rate instead of the recipes. The rewards for clearing the rate and the spirit fragment are both affected. So that means Ignas rate, no more recipes, you will get the whole product um, from the spirit fragments and this is also a nice one. Oops. Um, the following spirit fragments from the unique rates are now storable in the, in the team storage. That is very good, I appreciate that and I'll welcome that. Um, here are some um, changes to gemstone field, um, just a few ones. Uh, minor changes to some entry voucher items, the cooldown time of Dimension Collapse Point, Border Scrolls and Dimension Collapse Point. Entry vouchers are separated and the icons of Challenge Mode 1 Entry Voucher, Weekly Rate, um, Weekly Boss Rate, 1 Entry Voucher and Dimension Collapse Point. 1 Entry Voucher are changed. Um, I already saw that in game um, and was kind of a uh, surprising change since you can actually differentiate the items now. Um, there's an immobility debuff um, that will be needed in the Burnest Dungeon. And something about the monster here. Um, let me see the items. Here. Okay, that's apparently there weren't some items dropped from monster. Um, number 5 Item and Exchange Shop changes. New item for Mercenary Patch Shop and Exchange Count changed for an item. Um, Kedora Merchant Alliances Mysterious Cube requires. 450 mercenary badges and can be exchanged up to 10 times a day. You can get one of the following from the cube by random. Mamma Mia. Also some nice uh, recipes and equipment, so... Pretty good, pretty good. To have more access to the best possible items in the game. Mm. Okay, you can now use the mercenary badge shop by uh, the mercenary badge shop icon um, on the left side of the minimap in the cities. Yep. There's an icon that you will see there that looks like um, the silver coins in game. Uh, you can't miss it. It's um, in the same vicinity or in the same area as the shop icon the, um, and the, what's it called? The team battle league item. I item? No, not the item. It's an icon. An icon, of course. Various reset potions are added to the wings of our coin shop. So. These are the Arts Reset Potion everyone was asking for. Now you can get them. Just log in, get your Wings of Aurora Coins simply by logging in. And after a few days, you can reset your Arts if you want to. Also, the um, price of the Skill Reset Potions has been reduced in the Barbara Shop. The tradability of the following items are changed. Moth Powder, Moth Dust and Skittles Feather are now team storable and market tradable. Very important uh, because this allows the players to actually craft the best possible equipment in the game themselves without doing the hard rate dungeon. And then we have the 6 star gem abrasive and 5 star gem abrasive are now team storable. Um, the list of the goddess graces changed, you can read through that yourself. A little change here. Okay, 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 we have that. The gem exchange system from the Kedora Merchant Alliance and Precise in each city is changed, you can exchange. One gem for free every day. The border color will be changed accordingly to the kind of gem you get. So, yeah, if you're out of gems, just go to this NPC. You will get a random uh, gem every day. Can be level one to level six. Uh, the color is also random, and you also have the chance to get a, a skill gem. But of course, easier. Uh, 
pretty rare. Um, the Brutal Seal of Random Profession drops from weekly contents. Very good. And then we have uh, several changes to effects, uh, so set effects in this case. So you can see it's the whole line uh, Rikuma, Korup, Sauga, etc. So, so this is something you should read um, through by yourself because the changes are quite big and some of the set effects have been adjusted accordingly to be much better. So not everyone is just using Ataka or Smoogies. Um, next one, available set of Varna equipments extended. Um, Rikuma, Core, Plus Power Band, and Drinti can now be applied to the Varna equipment. Uh, required amount of Pamoka Solution and the function are as same as Savinos. Very nice. The equipment in the weapon spot slot cannot be disabled anymore. Um, then we have the spell and charm protections removed. Uh, ba -ba 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 okay, this is an interesting one. The following item can be obtained from the following source. Recipe Gladiator, uh, recipe gladiator Bangle dropped from Long Branch Tree at the Ancient Goddess, uh, at the Goddess Ancient Garden Zone. Um, I think it wasn't available anymore really, but uh, the issue was that the Gladiator Bangle was used for other high-end equipment, so there was not, no really... Uh, there was not really a way to get it, uh, so this is great because those branch trees spawn there quite often. It's a level 100 area, so easy to get. Um, okay, just some items that can be used now consecutively. PvP changes, some small PvP changes. Um, other changes, let me see. Um, in game guide is updated, clear time ranking. Okay, okay, just some. Neat stuff. Uh, this is an important one. The companion slot is separated from the character slot. So, if you have a companion, it doesn't use your um, character slot. That is very important. That was something people always complain since the beginning, and they finally changed it. Hallelujah. Okay, some um, changes to Simone the uh, companion. As you can see, it's quite long. Um, this is also important, the background color of some items are changed. Um, so the yellow ones are considered legend items, then we have the clear powder as a blue item, zero powder as a red item, and so forth. Um, this will come in handy because, yeah, um, Rooting Chance now affects the drop rate of legend items, which uh, have a yellow background color. So if those items um, in the future are dropped in fields, then um, something everyone should keep an eye out. On these changes because yeah this opens up new farming areas um and just some minor changes here um nothing really um groundbreaking ah this is an interesting one the opening animation of the other user's personal shop will no longer be visible yes um you probably noticed every time you get to clapeda or log in um this animation will change where the shops are falling down from the sky of several different of several different players and yeah um this was always kind of unnecessary so now they appear in town and it also seems like this um strengthened the performance of the game so that's something really good okay let's take a look at the skill changes you can see that the arts system has been changed a bit the maximum level of the enhanced uh, upgrades for attack skills has been increased from 10 to 20 um, and some other changes here. Um, what I wanted to get into are the specialized stats of each class. Um, the changes are not that big, but they are certainly interesting. Um, these are the stats before the update, the base stats, and these are the stats after the update. So they change this around a bit. Um, you can uh, go through this one by one. Um, spend some time. Uh, going through this today it will not change the meta or anything but it's certainly interesting to see that um, all feather foot skills are changed to dark property very interesting for feather foots and very good um, that allows synergy with the other shadow uh, based wizard classes that's that's something to look forward to and now we get to the super good part the skill balance it's a lot boys it's a lot so I will try to summarize this as good as possible um, 
here we have a duration change for the lethargy and lethargy attribute from 60 seconds to 30 minutes this has been ongoing going um, this has been ongoing for a long time um, that a lot of buffs are changed to 30 minutes to make um, the play experience or the, um, yeah, the experience in game easier for players because yeah if you have to rebuff yourself every 30 seconds and you have like I don't know five to ten buffs it's getting kind of annoying um, Shadow Mainza buffs of course yeah um, because Shadow Mainza have received a lot of a lot, Warlock as well so you can play around with your Featherfoots that are now dark property magic users and some Featherfoot uh, buff changes as well some good ones with attributes and so forth elementalist changes these are pretty good ones because yeah um, the element uh, mastery elemental attribute is added that increases as you can see here fire ice lightning earth property magic by three percent and here we also have an attribute um, that is changed to increase the uh, magic damage of fire, ice, lightning, and earth properties uh, skills. So, magic attacks, so terramancers, take note. That opens up a whole lot of possibilities um, with other classes uh, through elementalists, so very good in my opinion. Some changes to um, Taoist, as you can see here. Uh, new attributes are added to increase um, the damage. Um, so yeah, something interesting for Taoist since they have been hit with the nerf stick in, in the balance patch before this one as far as I remember. Um, Terramancers, they might become interesting because that's also an uh, interesting attribute here. Um, I'm still not a fan of the general design of Terramancers, I think it's a bit lazy um, since most of the skills are just copies uh, from other skills that already exist. But they are certainly getting stronger. Um, Archers. Tiger Hunter, Musketeer changes, Retrue them, very good, very strong, they are now considered pretty damn strong. Um, I'm not going through them one by one because there are a lot of changes, but pretty good. Same with Arbalester. Arbalester is now in a place on the Korean servers where it's actually considered one of the best DPS classes. So don't, te don't tell your friends, just keep it to yourself, I'm just telling you this to you. Uh, one by one, so let's just keep it low. It's because we are the Lester Bros. We 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 shouldn't share this with the world. They're pretty good now. Quail Shooter, same thing. Um, a lot of positive changes, buffs. As you can see here, all of the classes that are listed here also received some very very nice attributes. Um, the way IMC is going now is um, giving classes a lot of attributes that generally increases the damage or critical damage and so forth of other classes in the tree so you can mix it up even more um i've went for the skill simulator with cradle shooter and it looks quite decent surely not top dps but something to consider if you want to um the Mogushi patch um will come with the next balance patch because the, this one has been released in korea like a week ago or so so nothing will change for the Gushis. Chaplain, um, deploy Capella Repentance, very good attribute because um, it cuts the damage increase in half but increases the duration to 30 minutes and motion of installing Capella is skipped. This is probably one of the best changes so far because the um, animation you have to cast locks you in place for what feels like an eternity and the, the monsters can just hammer on you the whole time so this is a heaven sent this attribute um binashio now has additional uh damage that is attached to it when you are leveling it up very good i think it's uh at max level it's like twelve thousand additional uh bonus damage that can be further increased with divine might and skill gems so very nice for this time now that decreases the movement speed of enemies when they are hit so javelins also receives some love. Um, some changes for Monk, Inquisitor. People are a bit, uh, let's say, divided by the Inquisitor changes. Um, we can read through them. They're certainly not worse than before, but um, make your own judgment. They're still a good class at the end. Say a lot. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was playing a Say a lot before, but I changed this now recently. 
the change that I don't like here is this one. Overheat change from two, uh, two to one. The damage is increased, but um, as you can see, the cooldown is now 40 seconds. That's quite long. Yeah, uh, see a lot. Um, what shall we? What shall we say about them? I mean. They also ha uh, changed the functionality of some of the skills, so yeah. Read through it, make your make up your own mind. But I think some classes um, got it better than see a lot in this patch. Uh, Blossom Blader just some PvP changes because of course we cannot nerf or, or balance Blossom Bladers. They have to be tip top DPS all time. So very now has oh, Now we get to an interesting part: um, the buff for the spear class in the swordsman with dragoon. Very nice buffs, lancer. Wow. Um, because even Conria, I think a lancer build is like the top DPS build right now, thanks to these buffs. Retiarios as well. So lancer, retiarios, dragoon, mm -hmm. and we're not done. Catafred and hoplite also receive price changes. So. Spear classes are now, I wouldn't say OP, but they can out DPS Blossom later builds now. It, it's certainly possible. And we have some nice buffs for Metros and Cannoneers. So that's also something um, those players can look forward to. Just read through them yourself. You'll we'll see here the skill factors have been uh, adjusted, greatly increased, and so forth. Um, especially, as I said, look out for good attributes your class might get. Druid. Mm. Also quite a few changes. Oh, and we have the comeback of the century right now. Hold on to your seatbelts. Miko is back. Miko is back and Miko is running for everyone now. Miko is not a good class, so if you um, left Miko in the dust um, in the last few months, don't do it anymore. Miko is back and better than ever. As you can see here, it fundamentally changed some buffs for Sadu. Exorcist because of course Exorcist always gets buffed in some way and some neat cover in this changes so there's that some processor changes and Rip Crevice it was nice knowing you I mean <sighs> I complain about it on stream but yeah what have they done to my boy Crevice it's a sad sad situation I don't want to talk about it um, let's talk about Paladin. Paladin has been not fundamentally changed, but boy oh boy, there's a lot to digest here. Um, you can actually change the skills into magic skills now. You will receive a lot of attributes for stone, skin and barrier that are pretty damn good. That, for example, increase the physical damage of you and your party members. Demolition attribute, a good one. Restoration is now decent. Sanctuary. Paladin is in a very good place right now. So Paladin Bros. Rise up. Um, some changes to Plague Doctor. Ooh. Ooh. Our Shinobi friends. Um, they are loved again by IMC. Um, what shall I say? They received a very nice Mavora weapon. And also some very, very interesting and good buffs. Shinobi is good now. Play it. That's all I'm saying. Read through it. Long description. But the gist of it is... Shinobi is good now. Okay, some tool tip changes about effects of skills that are uh, not mentioned in the uh, skill description. So, not really that important, but you can read through this if you didn't know it. Um, I'm scrolling through that. And a lot of bug fixes here that you can also uh, read through yourself. So, a lot has been changed for the better. Um, there are certainly new build possibilities now. I'm currently playing around with life have my characters because it was necessary for me to change up my build so really something to look forward to we received a lot of content that was scattered all over several different uh, patches on the korean server and they were bundled up here uh, at once so that's actually very good so there is a lot to explore right now so uh, log into the game have fun try out new builds and let me know what you think about it so I hope everyone liked the video. As you can see, Tree of Saber has a lot of new content and class balance changes to make it much more interesting. Also, um, the server has been stabilized and everything um, runs much more smoother. So please leave a like, um, leave a comment in the comment section, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, 
You can also follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. You can join my Discord and I'll see you until next time.